Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. Do we have fun in store today? Yes, the answer is yes we do. And we have the best sponsor ever that I will ever get and just the youngest as well. So you'll hear more about that in just a minute. But today's video, we are gonna be talking about those things that would normally look like trash and would be either put in the recycling or put in the trash bin. We're gonna turn them into actual craft supplies. So I'm super excited about this video because you know me, I'm frugal, but I also like to be conscious when I'm in my craft space as much as possible. And so this is just a really great idea filled video. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to say is if you have these mats or if you've bought them super duper cheap, they're for like a Cricut die cutting machine, you can use those in your craft space. And so let's talk about how. Here I'm showing the inner part of my mini Misty. This is a stamping tool that I have here. And I'm showing you to cut up certain sizes for it. So this is the mini, and then I'm gonna show you the regular size. And what that can do is it can hold your cardstock in place because it still has a little bit of a tack. Now, if you're getting rid of this mat because it's lost this tack completely, there are things you can do like add glue to it. There's some glues I'll link below that stay tacky when they dry. You can kind of put a coating on that and that will help and I'm sure you all have awesome ideas for this as well so be sure to put in the comment section how do you restick your mats because I'd love to hear sometimes it's just washing it and it gets restuck so it's or just re tacky so it just depends but I'd love to hear from you in the comments throughout this whole video because I know you're gonna have way more ideas on how to turn trash to craft <laughs> than I just do so I'm gonna show you a demo here where I'm putting down my cardstock right on this mat and then I'm putting my stencil now, it's not sticky enough to hold the vinyl that's been rolled up for my Cricut, so it is sticky enough to hold a flat piece of cardstock, so that's great, and I can do some stenciling. Now, this next piece is along the line of vinyl in that this is a full sheet that I peeled back from my vinyl. I peeled this back and then I actually put the heat transfer image on my shirt, and now I'm left with this very sticky piece of vinyl transfer tape? It's not transfer tape. It's the piece that comes with the vinyl. Um, and it's just like the sticky mats, except it has a little more tack, actually, if you've ever messed with any vinyl. So don't throw that piece away. If you're doing heat transfer vinyls, keep it and reuse it in your craft space if you do paper crafting like me too. I'm going to be using this to hold down my stencil and I'm just showing you a quick demo of what that could look like. And it's just so cool because I'm keeping this in my stash. And in fact, you can even affix this inside your Stampin' Platforms and use that to hold down your stuff. Um, so lots and lots of ideas here for that. Now here's another way that you can use that sticky part once you release it from the heat transfer. So if you didn't know what I was talking about, this is what I'm referencing. I placed down my uh, image, which is the tree, this big old tree, and I'm gonna peel back this sticky part. Well, since this is already cut out because I actually cut this from a die, a nested tree die, and so I have this, I can use that as a mask and it's sort of like the opposite of a stencil. So now it's an actual piece of the crafting product. Now I'm putting it down on my wooden plank here, and when I spritz around it and I kind of set in all of that wood stain and peel it up, I'm gonna have this sort of masking uh, image of the tree and that's just from vinyl transfer stuff like it's I, I wish I knew the official term folks <laughs> it's the piece from the vinyl and so yes so try that out okay let's move on to our next supply hack here I use removable sticker label paper from rock paper scissors this is the best alternative I've done multiple videos on it to use for masking in my paper crafting but if I cut those up, if I use one full sheet, let's say, or even these little sheets here, the um, release paper from that is going to be great as a craft mat or just a surface to get inky and have some fun with. So right here I'm showing you, this is actually this piece I'm actually showing you, even though it works on both. This is from label paper that I use for when I ship stuff. Same concept, right? Same concept. So I have just the release paper from it and I'm just gonna do some ink smushing on it. Works great. So I would say 
this is one of those things, again, if you don't have a craft mat or, if, or maybe if you're going to a crop and you have lots of people, you can bring this excess paper, this excess release paper, and use it for everybody attending. So that is a huge money savings because this stuff was going to end up in the trash. All right, so before we continue on with more ideas and more hacks, let's hear a word from our sponsor, my son, AJ, who is 10 years old. He is going to showcase one of his latest creations, and it could not be more perfectly themed. All right, everybody, we are here with the author and animator, illustrator? Illustrator. Yes. Um, of the amazing brown bag, AJ Polanco. Hello, AJ, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. All right, talk to me about what inspired you to draw this particular book, this comic book. Okay, so in school, I was making, like, we were supposed to do a decoration with brown bags uh, for something, and for some reason, I just drew a brown bag with a cape on the front of it and called it the amazing brown bag and then that inspired me when I saw a piece of paper I made the front of a comic called the amazing brown bag well I have to tell you I know I'm your mom so there's a little bias here but when you brought this home I was really entertained it's really funny and such a cute story so give the listeners a little bit of an idea of what the story is about. It's about this brown bag who gets used for lunch and then he gets thrown in the trash can and then um, he climbs out of it and he goes over a recycling bin where this guy named Plastic Bag is trying to start a riot against the humans. Um, and Brown Bag says, hey, and then, um, you know, Plastic Bag, because he's an evil dude, he says, go back to the trash can, you're not in the recycling bin. There is also something unique about the book, AJ. So, the first 17 pages is your comic, and then what's after that? Um, a bunch, like, a lot. Almost, I think, 40 of just comic pages where you can make your own comics. Right, because you want to encourage people to try, right? To make their own comics and let their own imagination come to life. Yes. Yeah? Okay, so it's both a journal for comic book writing and his very own The Amazing Brown Bag at the front end. You're going to love it. Yeah. So we do have a limited amount of uh, copies that you can get signed by AJ. So if you would like one of those, you can click the Etsy shop link below. And if you want to pick it up from Amazon, you can get that as well below. There is a link for that. All right, AJ, thanks so much for hanging out with us and for bringing your creativity into the world. You're welcome. By the way, warning, um, the cover looks a lot different from what the book like actually looks like so oh okay so you want to help manage their expectations of the illustrations yeah well that's fair but it, your illustrations are also awesome yeah all right thank you again aj for showcasing your creativity with us all right let's go back to making trash into craft stuff so i was going to throw this out because you know it's recycling and i don't need it anymore but then i thought you know i do need a spot to hold some of my tall items in my craft room, like my scissors and my tools. And so I decided that I was going to try to make something of this. Now, let's just keep an open mind here. Now I see where AJ gets it. <laughs> I wanna manage your expectations uh, because black doesn't go with everyone's craft room and there's lots of things you can do with this. You can use this container, you can paint it, you can put um, paper over it. You can do all kinds of things if you're looking for extra containers. In fact, if you have multiples, you can kind of glue them together and have sort of that stackable thing to put your markers on, on its side. Lots of stuff you can do. I'm just doing something so super simple. I die cut a holographic circle to cover the top. Now, I don't know if you saw in the beginning, I was using a heat tool to remove some of that adhesive. That definitely works, so that's a tip. But then I'm just gonna put this uh, cute little holographic circle on the top and then really the only thing I'm going to add to this uh, at this point because I'm just going to keep it simple 
is I'm going to put some stickers on it. Now the adhesive from the original packaging came off extremely well. There was no residue left behind, so that was awesome. Um, but if there is, try using alcohol ink, or excuse me, alcohol wipes, or heating tool and scraping it off. Those are options that you can try. Uh, and then I'd love to hear from you in the comments. How do you remove adhesive from stuff? Because I know there's more ideas. So I'm gonna cover both sides. I like this Wellness Warrior sticker here, and I use the other one, um, Enjoy the Journey. I believe that's what it says. Embrace the Journey. Um, all two, two of my mantras, uh, and two very important things to me. And then I'm just gonna stick this over into my craft space. Now, um, in hindsight, I would go back and put some ribbon around the top to cover sort of that spiraling at the very top, um, because I think that would be fun and add a little bow or something like that. That would be really pretty. And you can do like silver sparkles and see, cause here it just looks a little plain, but you can really dress this up. So think about some of those things that you would automatically toss in the recycling or in the trash. And can you use them to store some of your supplies for free? Free 99. All right, let's go on to our next one here. This is a popular one, and I think a lot of us do this already, but just in case, don't throw away your packaging. Now, I'm not recommending that you don't throw away any of your packaging because I have been in a situation in my life where I have not thrown away any of my packaging and it started to overtake my craft room, at least one full drawer. So I pared down and kept the good stuff. But I'm gonna show you a couple different ways you can reuse this packaging from stuff you buy. So the first way here is a technique that I do not do ever, and this might've been the first time I've tried this, folks, because I see it all over the place, but it's so fun. I used this packaging to place some ink down onto my watercolor cardstock, and you get so much control with it, and you can bend it easily. I've seen this done with acetate sheets as well that are a little thicker, and that seems to work maybe better, but I don't know. Um, but this is so fun, and I had to stop myself because I have a tendency to get just too carried away. But there's another thing you can do with your packaging besides just covering to make shaker cards, you can actually make shaker pouches. And so what's really cool about this is I have this little heating bag, like a chip bag sealer, and you can use your packaging uh, material and you can use this heater I guess it's not a heater it's a package sealer and you can make shaker pouches now what's fun about this is um, I love the movement from a shaker pouch I feel like once you give it a little bit of room between the panel the top panel and the base you have so much movement in a shaker pouch and which I struggle with when I'm making shaker cards how much to put in there this kind of doesn't let you make that mistake. You can put some in, flatten it out, see if it's good before you seal it up. Um, or you can, and then you can seal it on the final side, right? So that is to me amazing because, oh my gosh, I, I suffer from the too little too much syndrome when I'm doing shaker cards. So now I have the sides sealed here and I'm just gonna show you um, very simply, it is a really easy tool to use. This one in particular is a USB. Um, that I have here so you recharge it with a USB which I like because I don't have to mess with batteries um, and so yep it works great so I'm just putting some shaker bits in there to show you I think this was a demo or no I used this in a card where I made balloon stars and I made a couple of them and so then I put both of these shaker bits behind it I don't have the card anymore but that was sort of a graduation card all right, so then, yes, and then you can just kind of cut off the excess. You can make them as small or as big as you want them. Huge fan. This is stuff that would have ended up in the trash and now is makes, makes a really cool card or project. Um, yeah, super happy about that. All right, so don't throw away your packaging. Use it in other things. I'm moving on to our last object here for this video, and that is our glitter pens. So I know that you um, may be out of glitter, it may not work. First of all, if you want the clear glitter still in your glitter markers, add a little bit of water, or maybe there's a better solution to add, but add a little bit to it because you can still get some of that excess glitter that's still in there. However, we are gonna be keeping this glitter, but I'm gonna make it a purple glitter now. So take your re-inkers and make your own glitter markers. So I just pulled out a, I think this was the queen 
Queen's Day, Queen for a Day color from Catherine Puller, and I just put one drop in there. Then I go back and I put in two more drops to make it more concentrated because I wanted to see how much of a difference that made, and I'll show you here on the screen. So I want to hear from you. Like I said in the comments below, I want to hear what are your greatest trash to craft items. Share with all of us because the comments section on my channel is just the greatest. So if you don't hang out down there, I highly recommend it. You're going to learn so much. Again, I want to say a big thank you to our sponsor, AJ, for bringing us his creations. If you want to check out his book, those links will be below. We're always fundraising for his school, so that would be a great help. I'll list other products that I showed in this video as well in the description box below. And if you would like to come craft with us live virtually, I am hosting my very first crafting event on 17 June of 2023. It's going to be a super big blast. I have $1,000 in prizes I'm giving away. It's a big thank you. If you want to register, the link is below for that. Make sure you get registered and get your ticket and we are going to have so much fun. We're doing three projects. We're going to have trivia. We're going to be doing giveaways the whole time. Just join us. It's going to be fun. All right. I'll see you on the comments down below and in the next video. Bye-bye.